Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the Hesse. We have been working on the vocabulary vocabulary words from chapter number three of the book here in my hand, the Hesse Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Also, by the way, if you happen to need help in the math portion of the exam, you will find that we have already solved every single math problem from this book. In the event that you need help with the HESI math, you will find 50 videos, day 1 through 50, HESI math, day 1 through 50, where, as I said, all the solutions are present. In addition to that, if you feel that you need more exercises, more, more practice, there are 80 more videos on the T's series, and the math on the T's, as you know, is very similar very comparable to one what to what one encounters on Hesse. So that is there as well if you wish to avail yourself. Today is our lesson number 15, not 14. Let's get going. 15. The very first word we have is gaping. Gaping. Gay. It's an adjective, and I realize it's a very simple pronunciation, but as you know, we always put down a pronunciation, regardless of how easy or complicated the pronunciation may be. It just means, gaping, gaping simply means something that is wide open, something that is, something that is deep, something that is deep, and wide open. Now the reason why this word appears in your book, in Hesse, uh, is because in the nursing field, in the medical field, uh, every so often you will encounter a situation where one speaks of a gaping wound. A gaping wound. A wound that is not a small wound, it's a wide open wound, perhaps through by stabbing or some sort of a, some sort of a drastic, uh, traumatic, uh, event that might have taken place and that wound is a, is a gaping wound, it's wide open wound or perhaps as a result of an accident and it's called gaping wound. Let's move on to the next word. The next word we have is 70. The word is 70. He, that's the first syllable, he, mo, Tall O G hematology. Hematology is the is the pronunciation. Uh, uh, I just remembered a little uh, a joke, if you like, a little uh, scene from a comedy series. I don't know if you're familiar with it. The comedy series is called Yes Minister. Yes Minister. It's a British comedy series. I'm not going to go into too much detail into it, but uh, obviously there is this minister who has just been elected. He's in the office now. And while he was running the campaign, the election campaign, he was running on the plate, uh, platform of open gov government. He wanted an open, transparent government. That was his thing. You know, elect me. If you elect me, we'll have an open government. So he gets elected. Within the first week, within the first week of he being in the office, apparently something has taken place which the minister wants to hush up. He wants to sweep it under the carpet. And his secretary reminds him, but minister, you ran on the promise of open government. To which his answer was, yes, open, but not gaping. Isn't that nice? Hematology. Hematology is simply a study of blood. The study of blood. Anytime something ends in a ology, that means study of something, biology, zoology, hematology. The adjective would be, the adjective of hematology would be hematologic. Hemato
amateur logic, which means having to do with blood. Having to do with having to do with blood. Okay. So the problem seems to be hematologic, the problem seems to be something having to do with blood. I suppose that's how you would use it. I don't know, I'm not a medical person. Let's move on. Number 71. Number 71 we have impair. What does it mean to impair? M impair. It's a verb, obviously. Impair means to decrease or to diminish. To decrease or or to diminish in quality or strength or if you like a value or perhaps even quantity. Impair is the word which simply means that the quality has been compromised, the, the quality has been decreased, has been diminished, it is not as strong as before, it is not as valuable, it is not as precious as before, its value has been impaired, it has value has been decreased, its value has been diminished. Perhaps you dropped it and there's a crack in it, no, the value is impaired, it's decreased, it's diminished, it's compromised. For example, one might, one might use it in a sentence as as for example, you might say that uh, last week we had a hurricane. Hurricane was so hurricane was so strong that it impaired communication throughout the state. The hurricane was so strong that it impaired communication throughout the state. The cell phones were not working. The tele regular telephones were not working. You know everything was down. We had impaired communication. Sometimes we hear of people having. Sometimes we hear of people having. Impaired vision. If one has impaired vision, that means one cannot see as well. Their 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 sight has been compromised. Their sight is just not as strong, not as good as it used to be. They have impaired vision, no, either as used to be or what, what what is considered to be average or normal. One speaks of impaired. I I should know how to spell impaired. It's right there. Impaired speech. If you have impaired speech, if one has impaired speech, one may have to go to speech therapist. One one talks about impaired cognitive ability. Perhaps as a result of some sort of a head trauma in an accident, one might have impaired cognitive ability, uh, impaired cognitive ability, that's correct. Uh, something has happened, they have a head injury, they have a concussion, and now they have, a, as a result of the concussion, as a, re as a result of that head injury, the patient is said to have impaired cognitive ability. Let's move, move on then, number 72. The next word we have is Number 72, impending, impend, impending, it's a verb, impending simply means something that is about to take place, something that is about to take place, something that is about to take place. Something that is about to happen. About to happen. Something that will occur soon. Something is something that is likely to occur soon. Something that is something that is likely to occur very soon. Something that is likely to occur soon. One talks about <coughs> an impending 
Now, in the past, in the past myself, in the past myself, I have only heard of this word most of the time, not always, but in most cases, one hears the word impaired in the in the context of something negative, for example, impending doom, or impending hurricane, or an impending uh, tornado. But in here, in the book, they give you an example of an impending surgery. That was a new word to me. Impending surgery simply means surgery that is about to happen, surgery that has been scheduled and will take place very soon. Some surgery that will take place in the very near future, it is an impending surgery. Let's move on. Number 73. Number 73, we have eminent. M O Nunt. Eminent. It's an adjective. Which happens to be synonym of impending. That's all it is. As simple as that. They are synonyms. They are synonyms. So we don't have to write anything there. It means exactly what impending means. Imminent means something that is about to occur. Something that is about to take place. Something that is that is likely to happen in the near future. In the very near future. For example, one might say one might say attack. Attack is imminent. Attack is likely to happen. Attack is uh, is going to happen very soon in the near future. One might talk about a merger being imminent. Merger. I know how to spell merger. That is. One might talk about. Oh hell. Merger is imminent. A merger is likely to happen. Merger is about to take place. Merger is imminent or bankruptcy is imminent. They are in dire situation. They are in dire situation. This corporation is in dire situation. Creditors are knocking on the door. It's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of time that they file for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy seems to be imminent. Impending bankruptcy is what we're looking at. Let's move on. Number 74. Number 74. Now do not ask me why I give you this example of bankruptcies and creditors knocking on the door when you're preparing for a medical, medical course, when this is a nursing, nursing exam. The reason is very straightforward. Because that is the best I can do. I'm not a medical person. Let's move on then. Next word we have is incidents. If you need help with the math portion, of course, I'm your man. Otherwise, if you need help with the medical issues, <coughs> coming to me would be akin to committing suicide. Do you understand? The word is incidents. Which simply means an occurrence. An occurrence. An hap a happening. It's always it always bothers me when, when it start when, when the word starts with an H because H as you know is a soft vowel. It is a vowel in French and I always wonder it should be should it be unhappening or should it be a happening? Should it be a house or should it be unhouse? Of course it's a house, but still I get confused. A happening, un occurrence, un instance, un instance, un event. An event. An incident. An incident is simply an event, an occurrence, a, a happening. Uh, an event, as I said, an occurrence, uh, something that happens. 
for example, for example, we might say that there is a high incidence of malaria. There is there is a high incidence of malaria in that part of the world. Whatever the part of the world that we're talking about, there seems to be a very high incidence of malaria in that part of the world. There seems to be high incidence of malnutrition. There seems to be high incidence of obesity in that part of the world. There are a lot of people who are obese. High incidence of obesity. Let's move on then. Next word we have is number 75. The next word we have is infection. Infection. In fact, in fact, that's the second syllable, and finally third syllable, shun. Shun. It's a noun, infection, which is simply a spread, a spread of diseases. Infection simply means the spread of diseases. Infection. What's the adjective of it? The adjective of infection would be, let's put it on top here. The adjective of infection would be infectious. Infectious. In. In fact. Infectious. Which simply means. A disease that can spread very easily. A disease that can spread very easily. A, a disease a disease that can spread very easily. I can't think of any disease right now which uh, call, would qualify as infectious. I'm not sure. As I said, I'm not a medical person. I don't know if malaria is infectious or not. But if you have a disease that can spread very easily, that is very easily transferable, very easily transmitted, such a disease is said to be infectious. Let's learn a synonym of infectious. We can describe such a disease as infectious, or we can des describe it as Contagious. Contagious. Which is also an adjective. Of course it will have to be an adjective because we just mentioned the fact that they are synonyms. Infectious and contagious are synonyms. Which means exactly what infectious means, which is why they are synonyms. Something that a disease can, that can spread very easily. A transmissible a disease that is transmissible, a disease that is transmissible either by direct or indirect contact, either by physically, literally getting in contact with the person who has the disease or even simply breathing the air which may contain some viruses and bacteria and so forth, who knows. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.